Hello everyone and welcome back to my YouTube channel. I'm starting to really feel consistent with the YouTube thing now. This is my fourth video for the fourth week. Um, I said I was gonna start uploading a video once a week and I'm doing it so far. So, you know, I really appreciate the love, the support, the comments, the feedback. I enjoy it all. Um, if you're new here, my name is Tay. Um, on social media, my name is Tay on Tech. And I'm on this page, I like to talk about the tech industry, personal finance, investing, and pretty much any way possible to level up your life. So. If it better your life, I'm probably talking about it. Um, today's video is me going back to the roots of things. Um, I know my last few videos have just pretty much been talking about personal finance, investing, and all those good things. But um, I get asked this question so much on Instagram, Twitter, and now even Facebook. And you know, I felt like I should probably create a video about it. Um, just for the simple fact, I get it asked so many times and of just like constantly DMing the person like the same exact thing. How about not just make a video about it? So with today's video, it's gonna be talking about how can you get into the tech industry? And basically, um, in this video, I'm gonna cover um, who I am, what's my background, um, what I currently do, um, do you need a degree, um, should you get certification, should you take a boot camp, um, what's, what exact technical skills that you need to get into the tech industry, and once you attain those skills, how do you actually land a job? So let's start with a quick introduction of who I am. If you follow me on social media, most likely you know who I am. But if you randomly found this video on YouTube, chances are you have no clue who I am. So you're like, why should I listen to this guy? Let me help ease your mind. <laughs> so I'm going to start off with my degree. Um, I have a degree which is called Integrative Studies. Um, it's pretty unrelated to what I'm currently doing, but I got a degree just to get a degree for the most part. Um, I hold several certification. Uh, multiple uh, Cisco certifications. I have multiple Splunk certifications, multiple CompTIA certifications, um, Red Hat certifications, as well as AWS certifications. Do you need all of those certifications to get to the tech industry? No, not really, but they definitely help you. And I didn't get all of those at one time either. I got them over the span of my seven years within the tech industry. So relax, you don't need all that just yet. Um, I've been in the industry since I was 18. I like actually in corporate America in the tech industry at 18. I'm currently 25, so yes, I've been in the industry for seven plus years. Um, within that time of me working within the industry, um, I held many positions in many sectors such as um, airlines, banking, finance, government contracting, um, oil and gas, um, big tech, construction management, real estate, pretty much seen every part of security and every part of, of every sector within the uh, cybersecurity space for the most part. So this is gonna be one of the questions that I probably get asked all the time. I see it on social media. I see it all over the internet and it's pretty much, do I need a degree? Do I need a computer science degree? Do I need an information technology degree? Do I need a computer engineering degree? Like what degree do I need? And to answer that question, you actually do not need a degree. Uh, for instance, I told you guys earlier that I have an integrative status degree, and that's pretty much one of those degrees that you get just to say, hey, y'all, I have a degree. <laughs> so it's definitely unrelated. Um, I've known many people that got into the industry without a degree and all those great things. So that is one thing that I love about the tech industry. It is pretty much the only, I'm not going to say the only one, but it's pretty much one of the best industries where you can go in, teach yourself a technical skill for three to six months and land a six figure job. So I know you guys probably thinking now like, okay, well, if I don't need a degree, so how am I supposed to learn these technical skills? They leave you two options. You're either gonna go to a, pay for a boot camp, pay for some type of online program, or you can self-study. For me, um, I was the type of person, I love to self-study, I love to teach myself things. I just work better teaching myself. Um, not everyone is able to do that. Everyone, that's not really everyone's forte. Um, I know many people, they rather say, hey, I just rather pay for someone to teach me this, or I rather pay for a boot camp and pretty much just learn everything I need to know. And so usually when it comes to boot camps, they're pretty much really hands-on um, activities, hands-on labs. They're pretty much teaching you through these courses and pretty much just telling you and teaching you everything that you need to know. You have that one-on-one -on -one time with the instructor. You can email them, send them uh, messages. Hey, I don't quite understand this. Can you teach me this? Can you explain this a little bit better? And that's pretty, that's essentially what you're paying for. When you're going through boot camps and things like that, you're paying for that one-on-one -on -one attention. You're paying for those interactions within the other students and stuff like that. Um, boot camps, for example, like me personally, I don't mind boot camps. It's a great way to learn. If you're not good at teaching yourself anything, 
and you're really not really just able to kind of be consistent or disciplined enough to actually sit down and say, hey, I'm going to study one hour a day, study two hours a day, or whatever the case may be. Uh, for me, I'm able to do that. I'm disciplined enough to do that. But if you're not, I will go the boot camp route. That is essentially the best route to go, in my opinion. Um, because a lot of things when you're a beginner, you have no, absolutely no experience within the tech industry. Um, you kind of want to have someone to kind of instruct you or lead you into the direction of where you kind of want to go, just so you really understand a lot of the concepts. And once you kind of start understanding the fundamentals of a lot of different things, then you can now branch off to self-study and start teaching yourself other topics within the tech industry. This now leads into certifications. I see this so much on the internet, specifically Twitter and specifically Twitter. Like people, once they get the certification, they just automatically seem like they're now qualified for this job. Well, the thing about certifications are it doesn't necessarily mean you are qualified for that job. It pretty much says, hey, this person has a baseline understanding of the basic fundamentals or the basic concepts of this particular um, certification. So say for instance, the Security Plus. I'm in the cybersecurity industry, so I'm gonna talk about that one. People feel like once they get that Security Plus in, um, certification, hey, I'm good to go, I'm qualified for this job, but that doesn't really mean that. Especially with what's kind of going around in today's you know, day and things like that. You have the thing called dumps where you pretty much, anyone can go in, go find these dumps and memorize the answer. So basically a dump is a test. It's just a test with all the answers and stuff like that. And pretty much people memorize these, go take the certifications, pass them. But when you get to these interviews, they can't pretty much explain any of this information to you. So one thing I like to try to tell people, yes, certifications are important. They really are. But if you can't understand or you can't explain or have a conversation about those same concepts within that certification, then it pretty much did you no good. One thing I like to try to tell people when they are going for certifications, try your best to actually understand those concepts, like understand what HTTP is, understand what HTTPS is, like understand the difference. Because the thing is, once you actually understand those concepts, when you get there and you take the test and you're looking at the answers, you're going to know, hey, this isn't right, this is right, I know exactly what this is. So once you know exactly what something is, then there's pretty much nothing no one can tell you about it. So while yes, certifications can be helpful if you actually understand and retain the information, but if you're just getting a certification, just that pretty much cert pad or pad your resume with certification, thing like that, tell you right now, that is not going to help you in this industry. Cause the thing about the tech industry is, it is really easy to point out who's bullshit and who's not bullshit. So let's talk about the technical skills that's needed within this industry. Um, I'm a cyber guy, so the skills that I'm gonna be giving you are pretty much gonna be directly towards cybersecurity. So the first skill is gonna be networking. Like the thing is, if you don't know how computers communicate with each other, then you're not gonna be able to sell within this industry. Um, you need to know how IP addresses work. You need to know network protocols. You need to know how like data is being sent back and forth through each um, node or each device or each computer. You need to understand all those different concepts. That's pretty much the basic concept of pretty much anything within the tech world. Like if it doesn't communicate or you don't know how something communicate with each other, then how are you gonna be able to understand where certain malware is coming from or pretty much how to detect certain things. It, you just, it's not gonna happen um, for the most part. And this may sound kinda intimidating now, but I promise you, once you just started really getting down the basic concept of these things, it gets really, really easy. Um, the second thing is security fundamentals. So with you knowing networking, now you need to know how to secure networking. You need to know how to um, secure firewalls, routers, all those great things because you know, like you see how both networking and security, they kind of go hand in hand with each other. Like if you don't understand networking, how can you secure it? You can't. So that's why networking is pretty much the fundamental of anything cyber. You have to know how, you have to know how anything communicate in order to actually secure it. And that goes with anything. You have to know something inside and out before you're able to actually secure it. Next up, incident response. So, now that you you identify something within a network you know how you know how it pretty much got in there how can you actually contain this if you see viruses or malware within um, a particular environment how should you handle that should you just unplug everything should you just let it roam free just let it should you report this to your manager like what should you do 
So that is one thing that's really important. You need to know how to like take precaution and actually know how to deal with certain situations as they arise. Next up is communication. Communication is super, super important when it comes to the cybersecurity industry. Um, a lot of people actually kind of look past this one, but it's actually really important. You need to know how to kind of take technical jargon and relay and translate it over to someone that has no clue about anything technical. You may talk to some executive, you may talk to your manager, you need to know how to translate technical jargon and to, well, you need to know how to translate technical jargon to someone that knows nothing about computers. And I'm not, and most of the people you're gonna be working with do understand this stuff and stuff like that, but it's very important that you know how to communicate and talk to um, your peers and talk to people within the business um, departments and things like that, because you never know whatever situation may come. There's been multiple times where an event had rise and I had to go talk to someone in a different department that had pretty much no clue what I was talking about. So the way I was able to pretty much relay this information to you was basically like, hey, if we don't fix this, this is gonna call us, cost us about $250,000. <laughs> Once you start translating like technical jargon into like what it could potentially cost the business and money, then they pretty much understand exactly where you're coming from. And also this is a bonus skill as well too on Splunk. Splunk in itself is a great skill to know. Um, within the tech industry, um, you're gonna be dealing with something that's what's called a security incident event management system. It's basically where a collection of where all the uh, network traffic is going to be stored. So that's where you're going to find any security events, any networking events, pretty much anything that can probably pose a threat to your um, uh, network or to your business organization. It's pretty much going to be stored within this SIM. Splunk isn't necessarily a SIM, but that's pretty much a video for something else. But it's pretty much a log aggregator, which pretty much breaks all this information up together where you can create all these cool dashboards, um, you can pretty much search through it. It pretty much just makes everything better and everything more organized whenever you're looking for certain um, events or certain security events. Well, Splunk is an amazing tool. Pretty much every company I've worked for so far, they've pretty much used Splunk as their sim for the most part. So learning Splunk actually puts you ahead in so many different ways. So now that you know that you don't need a degree, um, you may need certifications. You don't necessarily have to go to boot camps, but you can do that, or you can go to self study route. You know what technical skills you need. Now let's put all that together and actually show you exactly what you need to do to land a job. Cause I mean, that's why you guys click this video. Learning the skills is all cool and stuff like that, but how do you actually get the job? One thing I like to try to tell people about the tech industry, it is a small yet big industry in life. It's about who you know, not what you know. And that's actually how I got my big break in the tech industry. Like um, I met this one individual, I was going to cybersecurity conferences, I was going to hackathons, I was just pretty much going to any networking event that I can within the tech industry or cybersecurity industry to meet as many, as possible, uh, meet as many people as possible. And I know some of you guys are probably thinking, well, I don't know anyone like that. How am I supposed to meet people like that? Can you give me some tips? Gotcha. Download this app called Meetup. Meetup is pretty much one of those apps that you can find anything about any industry, real estate, tech, trucking, investing, anything that you wanna know, you can find it on this app. And so with the app, um, you have various different groups um, within your city. Um, I know I'm in a Dallas Fort Worth area, so we have a ton of cybersecurity groups, we have a ton of networking groups, ton, ton, pretty much anything within the tech industry, we have it, it's, it's on the app. Like, just search it up, go to your cybersecurity conferences, um, present, talk, do hackathons, like actually get yourself and get involved within this industry and meet and talk with these people. Be like, hey, you know, currently right now I'm looking to transition to the tech industry. This is currently what I'm doing. Just pretty much share exactly what you're doing. People specifically, especially within the cybersecurity industry, man, these people love to hear about what you're doing. Like, no matter how small you think it is, they're going to find it interesting. Like, I'm telling you, it's been so many times I went to a conference, I'm like, I'm not speaking there. Like, everything I would probably possibly talk about, these people already know about it. But that's not really, like, especially when you're looking for a job, it's not really about that. It's just pretty much showing like, hey, I'm comfortable enough to do this. I'm understanding exactly what I'm talking about. All of those good things. Really network. 
Next up, you have LinkedIn. LinkedIn is the GOAT. Like, I don't care what no one had, I don't care what you have to say about LinkedIn, but LinkedIn is hands down the best tool you can use to find a job. It's basically Facebook for professionals, in my opinion. I don't care what people say, people try to say, no, it, it is Facebook for professionals. LinkedIn is basically a living resume. You get to post about these cool projects that you're working on. You give a status updates about your um, learning, your self-studying, your boot camps. You can just pretty much update these people about everything or anything about your um, progression within the tech industry or your transition within the tech industry. These people love to hear this stuff. And so one thing that I really love about it, you have these individuals that try to go blindly apply these positions on the company websites, never hear back from them. The great thing about LinkedIn is the same as that recruiters that are posting these job requests or the job uh, posts, whatever the case may be, they're posting jobs. You can actually contact these recruiters directly. Hey, how's it going? I saw you guys are looking for this type of um, position. Here's a copy of my resume. I feel like I'd be a really great fit. This is why I feel like I'd be a really great fit. If you think I'm a great fit, here's my number, give me a call. I kid you not. I have pretty much almost received either, either email back or a call back, which pretty much led to an interview. Like the conversion rate for LinkedIn versus blindly applying on a company website is way higher. Like I've honestly received every internship offer, every job offer, and every contract offer I've ever received in the tech industry from LinkedIn. Like LinkedIn, for anyone that's in the tech industry is a gold mine. Like, I'm gonna actually show you guys like pretty much all of the messages that I get on LinkedIn. I literally get an uh, email for at least two or three emails a day of someone contacting me. Hey, looking for a job, looking for a job, looking for a job. And that is one thing that I really love about the tech industry. If you're in the tech industry, you would never, ever go without not having a job. Like, I got laid off during the pandemic and I kid you not, Two weeks later, I had a job paying me 25% more, and I asked to make another video about that one. That's pretty much um, all I have to talk about with this. So I wanna plug in one thing as well too. Um, I put this at the very end because this video isn't really about that. It was just me honestly giving out free game, gems, whatever the case may be. But if you are interested in all these things I just said, and you interested in learning it in a very fun and structural way, I do have a program called Get Me In Tech where it pretty much teaching you the technical skills you need. It's pretty much um, giving you the information that you need to pass the certifications. Um, it's teaching you how to interview, teaching you how to negotiate your salaries, pretty much teaching you all of those great things. It's teaching you how to do your resume, teaching you how to fill out your LinkedIn. I'm pretty much doing, helping you do all of those different things. And if that actually interests you, if that sounds like something that's interesting to you, you can click the um, link in the description below and you actually get 10% off. So um, I'm gonna end this video with that. I really appreciate you guys for tuning in. Peace out.